So today we're going to go over this uh, piezoelectric energy harvesting kit sold by piezo.com. I don't actually have it, uh, but I'm just going to go through it and uh, explain uh, what it's capable of or what I think it's capable of. Somebody sent me uh, this link and they asked if we should buy it. Uh, uh, for their application of charging a Chobo battery at 700 milliamps. Um, just as a, uh, to spoil the end, uh, this is not a product that will be able to deliver that kind of power. But uh, we'll go through it and so we can understand this kit and try to understand the numbers which, is, which are being presented and what that practically means. So I'm going to read through this and uh, provide any detail I feel is necessary. So here we have a piezoelectric energy harvesting kit, which contains both a piezoelectric element and an energy harvesting circuit. Uh, so when a piezoelectric transducer is stressed mechanically by a force, its electrodes receive a charge that tends to contract the imposed strain, piezoelectricity. This charge may be collected, stored, and delivered to power electrical circuits or whatever else you want to uh, do with it. Uh, the piezoelectric bending, bending generator, which is the bending, uh, which is the piezoelectric plate here, and it gives it a way that you need to bend it. Um, so bending the generator. So when a piezoelectric bender is flexed, one layer is compressed while the other layer is stretched, resulting in power generation. And I think I explained somewhere in the bimorph area uh, where I talked to probably in the question and answer section if you want to look that up uh, where I think I discussed the biomorph in detail uh, but basically you need two layers in a piezoelectric energy harvester uh, bending type uh, the reason you need two layers here is that if you have one layer you say you put a force on it and it's let's say you're it's pulled in the thickness direction and let's say you're clamping it here on this side you're going to develop tension on the top let's say and then the, the deform shape is going to look like this obviously if you put a force on it you're going to develop tension on the top tension and compression on the bottom and because there's an equal amount of tension and compression in the beam, you're, the net voltage that you're going to generate between the top electrode and the bottom electrode is going to be zero. So in order to offset this, basically you divide this bar by two into two different parts. We have an electrode, so we have, we're clamping here, we have an electrode in the middle, then we put a force, then the top is going to undergo tension and the bottom is undergoing compression. So basically uh, you hook this up in such a way where you can add, where you can have the voltage of the same polarity. See the voltage here and the voltage there are going to be of the same polarity and the voltage here in the middle are going to be the same polarity. Uh, because uh, the tension and the compression, you can reference uh, the other lectures on how a tension and compression force develop, what kind of charges based on the polarization vector. Uh, the spontaneous, but, but anyways, this double layer is necessary actually to generate the, uh, generate the charge properly instead of canceling out like this guy. So we were here. Um, one layer is compressed while the other layer is stretched, resulting in power generation. It may be excited by intermittent pulses or continuous from low frequency to the resonant frequency. And the resonant frequency is defined here where the displacement, the largest displacement is achieved with the lowest force level. So what does that mean? Resonance frequency? Just uh, interested in explaining every little thing. So if we have, uh, let's say on this, on this, x-axis we have frequency and on the y-axis we have uh, displacement we're just going to call that delta d for lack of a better way uh, frequency or angular frequency or f um, f equals 2 pi omega uh, so the res and re let's assume we have a constant force force equals a constant number at a certain frequency 
we're going to have the maximum displacement followed by this this characteristic so this frequency here is called the resonance frequency and at this frequency our piezoelectric energy harvester is going to be the most efficient uh, depending on the design of your piezoelectric energy harvester you will typically operate under the resonance frequency uh, because well because a lot of the because it's hard to get exactly uh, you know because usually in you know mechanical systems it's, it's hard to get your system to resonate exactly at the resonance frequency uh, therefore we usually try to design the resonance frequency to be higher than the vibration that we're trying to capture uh, so you can ensure that any variation that we get in the uh, frequency spectrum can also be uh, absorbed because once you go higher than the resonance frequency you start to absorb less energy you, you absorb significantly less energy than you would even before so this graph actually drawn properly would look more like this so we would probably start here then we'd peak somewhere let's keep in mind it's probably logarithmic and then it'd probably go down and it actually it events it would approach zero in the end if you increase to, do, to a theoretical infinite frequency uh amount then you would get zero displacement and that would be zero voltage and then also zero energy stored in the material or zero energy um, which could be harvested um, okay the energy harvesting bender is pre-mounted and pre-wired double quick mounting double quick mount bending generator designed to attach easily to sources of mechanical strain so see these two uh, holes here it means that you can easily attach that to like a beam or whatever you can just screw that in instead of having to uh, bond it yourself using epoxy or something dimensions for blah 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 are shown below cool piezoelectric energy harvesting circuit uh, so I'll, I'll read this and I'll explain why we need a circuit piezoelectric energy harvesting circuit the self-powered piezo uh, energy harvesting circuit collects intermittent or continuous energy input from the piezo generator and efficiently stores their associated energy in an onboard capacitor bank. During the charging process, the, the capacitor voltage is continuously monitored. When it reaches 5.2 volts, the module output is enabled to supply power to an external user load at this point 55 millijoules of energy are available when the generator input is high the output voltage remains on continuously capacitor voltage is clamped at 6.8 volts if external power demands exceeds generation the output voltage decreases when the output voltage drops to 3.1 volts, the power load is switched to off and is not turned on again until the capacitor bank has been recharged to 5.2 volts. The circuit accepts input voltage voltages from 0 to 500 volts AC. Okay, so see, look. This is not referring to our piezo because our piezo, right, this one is not going to generate 500 volts, nor is it going to generate 500 milliamps. So we're talking about the circuit here, separate from the bender, separate from the piezoelectric energy element. Essentially, what uh, their circuit here is claiming uh, is that we have. Uh, our piezoelectric energy element and i'll just draw it as a crystal this is what a uh, piezoelectric looks like in a circuit but for a energy harvester i'm not sure what what it exactly looks like uh, if you want to draw that in a circuit but anyways you have your piezoelectric crystal and it is developing some type of charge uh alternating charge that is because well if you press on a piezoelectric element uh you, you, you can only theoretically get out what energy you put in. You can't get any more energy out than you put in. So if you just simply push a piezoelectric element, you are limited to one push. But if you are pushing, let's say, 20 times 20 pushes a second, 
then you have the energy for from 20 pushes that you can gather. So essentially all piezoelectric energy applications, all if not almost all, uh, will be operating in an AC form will have some type of cycles, pushes per second or defor deformations per second or cycles per second. So we have this sort of charge. This is this all this Q, this is charge, and this is time. So we have this charge and time. Basically what we do then is we uh, we route this to a diode bridge. Probably not going to draw this that correctly. Okay, so that looks going to look like this. Okay, so let's just draw that part again. Uh, the diode bridge. Basically what this uh, diode bridge is going to be doing for us is it's going to be Uh, so so we put our piezo on one, one side on that side and then we put one side on here and then we take the voltage from here and then essentially what you're going to get out of this is that you're going to get a rectified wave instead of uh, what you normally would have got with some AC up and down signal you get a sort of DC signal instead so instead of this curvy uh, negative and positive you only get positive and the benefit of getting positive is because you want to for example charge a battery or a load or or a sensor or something like that they all take DC current they all take DC voltage and power however uh, piezoelectric elements energy harvesting for obvious reasons as I mentioned here we want them to operate in cycles so we want to convert that so this is the first step now we only have positive voltage but it's still changing and we want a sort of constant flow and the way we get a where we get a constant flow, so we have this is we add a smoothing capacitor. So if we take that whatever you know that that bouncing circuit and we put it over a capacitor, and we you know we hook this to our load. Let's say this is our load or or you know our battery that we're charging. You know whatever battery symbol there is. So we take that. It's actually going to end up smoothing this out. Instead of that, it's going to be like this. It's basically going to do, and you can look up the word smoothing capacitor. S M O O T H I N G smoothing capacitor. You can look more about that and how you can convert a AC signal into a DC effect. So basically, uh, what this product is claiming is that it's going to this smoothing capacitor is going to keep charging until it hits 6.8 volts and then when you hook a load to this circuit and that loses the resistor then the obviously because you're drawing charge and in charge over a capacitor's voltage so as you're drawing charge and as current is flowing through this um, resistor or load or battery to charge it the voltage is going to be dropping until it hits three point something volts and then the the system is going to shut off this is because the logic inside of the circuit is going to cause the circuit to uh, then stop charging because you need a certain voltage to be able to charge a battery correctly or you get uh, other unideal effects uh, something overheating something like that um, and again, when finally you start shaking your bender up and down, up and down, and you get back up to 6.8 volts over that capacitor, uh, then again, when you get over 5 volts, according to the circuit that they built, you again are, are uh, able to achieve, uh, then the circuit is then, uh, uh, give, makes power, ooh, wow, uh, makes power available. So go, going back to our, uh, our, so this is what it basically tells us. It charges the uh, external circuit until it gets in six, 5 volts and allows power to be drained until it gets to 3 volts and it turns off.
and the circuit can be charged up to 500 volts AC which is not going to happen because this type of generator does not generate that much voltage and it doesn't even generate 400 milliamps so it's sort of uh, irrelevant in a sense here's some more interesting ideas here uh, here's the weight and here's the stiffness it's really light uh, and you can imagine because it has such small mass it can't absorb that much energy because sort of the stiffness is really not stiff so you're not gonna even get that much mechanical energy stored and obviously the piezoelectric takes the mechanical and converts it to electrical and the ratio is not very high actually it's probably going to be the whole change percent max probably the maximum you could ever get would be like five percent of the energy going in especially with this design with the bending design five percent of the energy that you put in as mechanical can be converted to practical electrical energy uh, or less so anyway here's the capacitance um it would be interesting you can calculate then the effective d coefficient by force and how much charge you're getting and the capacitance and the voltage and so here's the maximum deflection that you can get before this thing is going to break if you clamp it on one side 2.6 um here's the resonance frequency the rated frequency so you can't drive it at a higher frequency than this if you have a application which uh which is vibrating at 100 hertz then this is not going to work uh the open circuit voltage is the voltage if there's no load so if you're not connecting it to a external circuit or anything you're just allowing the fields of trick material to vibrate and the charges which are developed stay there and they all are only dependent on what the piezoelectric material is doing then the maximum voltage you can get is 20.9 however if you short circuit these terminals uh, the terminals here and the terminals there you'll get a current which is 57 microamps per, per hertz and I think they they drew that straight line from the um, from the resonance frequency so basically if you multiply this number 57 microamps times 52 hertz that would be the maximum current you would get probably at this uh, expected deflection so let's run and they say you can get 7.1 milliwatts so what I want to do I just want to run a quick quick estimate here um, of what we can expect so open a good friend Excel and uh, try to count some numbers here so we had so essentially we had a, the, the the frequency was 52 Hertz okay Um, and well, let's just let's just run some other numbers. How about that? I, I mentioned that we have, we're going to have a five percent maximum efficiency because uh, if you want to do the math somewhere, go go ahead and go in the academic papers and find out how the math is done and how people have actually done experiments. But just take my word, just say it's around five percent. This is the maximum we can get. So here we have a two point two six millimeter deflection. So 0 0.002 actually, 26 millimeter deflection. Uh, and if you remember, the stiffness of a spring is one half. Oh, okay, 0 0.5. That'd be a little better. I don't know why you gotta do that to me. 0 0.5. Hmm. Well, make it a number. Excel, you don't know what I want to do. Okay, 0 0.5 times k, which is 188, you know, 1 half times kx squared. And the deflection here is 0 0.026 squared. So let's just take that squared. And multiply all, all these together. So now, right now, I'm finding the energy stored at the maximum deflection times, and we said the maximum uh, frequency that we can operate at is 52 hertz. So we get 0, 0.000 something joules 
stored for whatever force we did. Okay. Time 52. Okay, so it says that we can generate 0 0.3 watts because basically what I did here was I multiplied by 52 cycles per second and now I have watts to energy cycles second. You should do the math. Uh, basically, okay, so then we have 0 0.33 joules. So that's 33 joules, 33 watts. Oh, sorry, not 0, 33 watts. You. that's 33 milliwatts uh, not 33 milliwatts and I said what we can get 5% so that 33 times 0 0.05 if I could type correctly today oh please 33 times 0 0.05 1.65 so their estimate of 7.1 I think it's weight it's too high you know they're, they're trying to they may be trying to sell the product or something uh, 7.1 uh, I mean they are probably not looking at what's gonna happen from the sir electrical circuit so I can imagine that maybe in an ideal world something they can get 10% of this or 30% is impossible because the electromechanical coupling is not even 30% okay so you're not gonna get 30 percent uh you, you're gonna get much less so i think my estimate of maybe one milliamp milliwatt if you if you if you everything's optimal one milliwatt is great it would be something you could achieve another way we can look at this uh you know depending on what you, you know they're kind enough to give their stiffness uh but another way that this could be looked at is through uh, how much how much so when we deform this 2.6 uh, you know at 52 Hertz we're going to get 20.9 volts and we're gonna get 57 milliamps so as uh, the more we close the circuit so the larger load we put uh, basically if we short the circuit you're gonna get 57 milliamps but if you leave the circuit open you're obviously not gonna get any current because there's no connection between the electrodes and you're just gonna get voltage so if you put different loads like let's say you put 10 ohms you're pretty close to short circuit so it's gonna be closer maybe you'll make it 50 milliamps 50 microamps and you'll get like one volt but if you have like uh, a one mega ohm resistor connected in between them you're gonna get you're gonna get maybe nano nano amp and you'll get maybe 20.7 volts so basically there's a trade-off here uh, you either you can have the largest voltage uh, by having an open circuit or you can have the largest current by having it completely shorted but we, we operate typically in in between so we can extract the energy because if you don't put in an effective load because basically what the external circuit is doing is putting an effective load on the piezo and it's using that current that it's going current in voltage because voltage times current is power so you need to deliver power to that external circuit so it can have some energy to give out you don't put anything in you don't get anything out so you have to have voltage and current to put something in so uh you're not going to have the voltage and the current at the same time but let's assume you do this is just for calculation sake so 20.9 volts and uh, voltage times current is power right but this is peak power this is peak voltage so we're, go we're gonna have to multiply both of these numbers by rms square root of two and this is 57 microamps e to the 6 minus 6 but we're going to t multiply that by 52 because they claim it scales linearly it's not going to, it's not going to scale linearly but uh we can just put that there so what we'll have to do to both of these numbers we'll take the first number we'll multiply it by square root of 2 one second So, um, right, so the voltage, you got to put that square root because you're dealing with the sine. We multiply by this one times 
Okay, so here we have this, uh, 0 0.12, uh, and let's say for good measure, we just divide that by 2, because we mentioned there's going to be a trade-off. So it equals this, divided by 2. And then we said there's going to be 5%, uh, this is the total, uh, total wattage or total energy per time delivered to that circuit, uh, and we're going to multiply that by 5%. And now that's 0 0.039, so that's a little bit closer to what they had, uh, but on likelihood, um, this top this top one seemed the calculation seemed a little bit more solid here. Um, so 7.1 milliwatts RMS. You don't calculate uh, watts in RMS actually. Okay, and here's the rest of. What we have here um, see this is um, not really relevant this electrical part because it, it it describes what the circuit is capable of but the piezoelectric element is not even close to being capable of uh, inputting these type of parameters like 500 volts or 500 milliamps and uh, wow this is really expensive six hundred and sixty dollars um, But the, the the circuit probably has a pretty clever, uh, you know, setup because it do, it does uh, have that five point two volts, you know, turns on and off. But yeah, it's still, uh, and you can probably charge your cell phone with it. I'm guessing that's why they had it like that. Uh, but I think the amount of milliamps. So let, let me just fetch one of my uh, cell phone chargers right now. Let me just tell you. So here I have one of the old, one of my old cell phone chargers, and it says um, it does five volts at seven hundred milliamps. That is five times, and this is DC, right? So that's five times zero point seven. That's three point five watts versus what maybe about two milliwatts we could expect 3.5 watts times two milliwatts i'm just going to divide that by divided by zero by uh two e to the minus three yeah you're getting uh maybe two thousand times faster charging from a from a wall battery charger than you are with this piezoelectric element charging at optimal rate so basically what this is telling you is that this is not for charging cell phones okay ever never ever charge for charging cell phones this is strictly for like maybe if you wanted to power some sensor out in on a bridge or something and you didn't want to hook up power to it um you, and and uh, this is all, but you know when you're talking about energy harvesting, piezoelectric materials aren't the only option. You also have solar, which is which is much better. You have electromagnetic energy harvesting, which people don't really know about that much, or they don't consider it as much. Uh, you you can store electromagnetic magnetic energy from like a steel. Uh, or like you know a, a uh, magnetic metal going through a co you know a coil or magnet going through a coil and the magnet can be attached to for example something that's vibrating and the coil can be stationary and then therefore you can generate that you can generate current from that motion and uh, you know store energy and voltage in the same way uh, but it can harvest a lot larger amounts of energy the uh, piezos are best when things are small when things are large and big like you want to you want to you want to get big energy then i think a piezo is the wrong tool for the job you know you don't you don't screw in a nail you use a hammer if you try to screw in a nail it's going to go a little bit and that little bit's due to the sharp edge of the nail but as soon as the sharp edge of the nail digs in a little bit to the wood then you're not going to go much farther with the screwdriver you probably out to change your tool so anyways enough of that so this is just how to interpret this product here 
it probably uses a soft I mean most definitely uses a soft PCT there is a uh, more um, in their catalog page right here as you're finding let's keep going here and loading and it loaded so I think that they had mentioned something else this is really expensive it's terribly expensive six hundred dollars these are different ways to mount them um, they rated at 7.1 milli watts RMS which is what the heck milliwatts rms you don't use watts rms you use watt average power uh that's really that's really something um so this is uh so anything else to this no this is sort of interesting that they literally rate the current and the frequency uh, you would expect some type of parabolic relationship, parabolic or expo not exponential, but parabolic increase to the second power as soon as you're getting close to the resonance frequency. Um, so you have to make sure to wire it correctly, which probably lets you do that. So that's that. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this is one of the few websites where you can actually buy piezoelectric products off the shelf um but if you have the the budget and you don't know what to do you might want to buy this and sort of investigate how uh to to utilize it uh, but again it's 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 a piezoelectric energy harvester piezo is sort of not a good tool to to harvest large quantities of energy use something else like solar or hydroelectric or like um, ma magnetic which is, which, which is also very viable uh, material for the a very viable uh, solution for those type of applications so thanks for watching little birdie all right see ya